first appraisal back was upset. Um, and then there were just, there was some language in the appraisal that just didn't sit right with me. Second one, um, it came back even worse. It came back at 110,000. And this is just a few months after the first appraisal. And I'm just like, okay, so even if the 125 were correct, how did I lose $15,000 in a few months? Everything that I thought would expose the ethnicity of the person living in the home, I got rid of it and replaced it with something that I felt was ethnically neutral. The thing that was devaluing my home was me. And it's like, how do you even begin to process that? Yep, folks, we are back here on WLTH 1370 AM. And that was one Miss Carlette Duffy, who is alleging a woman. Well, she's from Indianapolis. She's from downstate from here. And she's alleging that appraiser valuation of her home more than doubled as she removed items that identified her race and asked a white male friend to attend the appraisal. Uh, her and the Fair Housing Center of Central Indiana have filed housing discrimination complaints with the federal government alleging appraisers violated fair housing laws the appraisers the complaint said purposely used comparable sales prices and were unfair and racially motivated one appraiser named in the complaint denied discrimination played a role while other people and companies involved did not respond to the associated press i'm sorry uh, she sought to take advantage of lower interest rates last year and refinance the mortgage loan for a home in a historically black neighborhood just outside of downtown Indianapolis, the Indianapolis Star reported. She purchased the house for $100,000 in 2017 and expected it to be valued similar to her sister's home in the same area, which was appraised at roughly $198,000 in 2019. An appra appraisal conducted by citywide and jeffrey pierce of pierce appraisal in the spring of 2020 valued her home at one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a second appraisal conducted by freedom mortgage and indianapolis based tim boston of the appraisal network valued her home at one hundred and ten thousand. jesus a third which was conducted after she did not declare her race on her application and took down all the family photos and the african-american art in her home came back at two hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars wow 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 so the, the this is happening and has happened to the black community a lot and this hits close home like i said my parents are, are are homeowners my grandmother's a homeowner i have uncles aunties who are who are homeowners one day i hope to be a homeowner and to see I, in order to do this story, I really look back at the history of Gary, right? The, and uh, I got to thank the great Sam Love, who posted a article to this. Uh, Sam Love, who was who's the editor of the Gary Anthology. Everybody go out and get that Rust Belt Publishing. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote one of the chapters. He, the history of and legacy of things like redlining in Indiana. He they the the article that uh, he posted on his Twitter page that went all the way back to 1940 and talked about here in Lake County, Indiana, how in, in Greater Gary, they made a map where the neighborhoods were ranked alphabetically from A to D, with A categorized as the most desirable and D being the least desirable. Neighborhoods deemed C in yellow were deemed to face an uncertain desirability in the immediate future. Areas as in D and D was red, which is where the term redlining come from. Yep. Now, these areas were defined as high risk or hazardous. Therefore, these communities were redlined by local real estate agents and lending institutions in an effort to deny capital investment and home ownership to marginalized re residents. These racial investment maps significantly became roadblocks for black people, Mexican-American immigrants, and ethnic Europeans during the 1940s and 50s. And we saw this 
uh, we saw this according to the homeowners loan corporation summary of the greater gary area the city and surrounding municipalities were graded a miserly 16 percent desirable city to invest in in 1940. 43 percent of the gary area was projected to be at risk and uh, and in decline by 1950. this is this is this is something that blew my mind because i'd always thought of gary before the 60s as being seen as a booming bustling but according to the the way the banks and and the homeowners corporation were, were ranking it they were already saying it was in risk of decline uh th these uh negative effects of redlining in 1940s set the stage for the negative economic outcomes for many in gary and the region including hammond and east chicago wow. so, yeah so this is going back to the 1940s and also when i when i looked up the story i wanted to see does the do these things still happen well obviously carlette duffy thinks that there's still racism in home selling at least but you're not gonna see red lines exactly but there is a thing called reverse redlining where banks have started engaging in predatory lending in the same neighborhoods that were marked off as off limits for black people and other borrowers in the years leading up to the 2008 crash mortgage lenders peddled hundreds of thousands of risky subprime mortgages including no doc and balloon payment loans on low income borrowers in places particularly in places like cities like detroit another organization exposed modern day redlining in 61 cities 61 and so pennsylvania is one of five states along with washington dc whose attorney generals have launched investigations that that found that 61 cities including atlanta black city detroit black city washington dc black city and people of color were far likely, more likely to be turned down for a home loan than their white counterparts the troubling pattern of denial occurred even when people of color made the same amount of money as whites and tried to take out the same size loan and buy oh, yeah. in the same neighborhood oh yeah wow. mean, there, there's so way so many ways that this credit thing Ooh. plays out i mean for example your credit score is dependent to such a large extent on your ability to access credit in the first place right and that is dependent on how much what do they call it the debt to income ratio yeah your your credit availability well you know one of the easiest ways to just trash your credit score is just to have some of your creditors some of your your revolving credit accounts just lower your available credit mm -hmm. so if you had a five thousand dollar line of credit then they chop it in half to 2500 well guess what that means to your available credit ratio none good exactly <laughs> If, if they if they say that a good credit score is predicated on you basically being having about 30 percent of your income tied up in debt servicing and all they have to do is just say okay well we're just going to lower your available credit so now instead of it being 30 percent now you're 50 percent guess what your credit score goes down what yeah. happens then now you you have to, you have to take more expensive mortgages some of those programs you can't access anymore and then on top of that the whole appraisal thing mm -hmm. i mean you know when the reality is the value of your home is less impacted by the stuff that actually involves your home mm -hmm. the stuff you have in your home yeah the amenities that you have in your home it's less affected by that than it is the neighborhood where your home is located. Right. Two houses, exactly alike, same features, same square footage. But if one is in a neighborhood where overall the values of the houses are higher, yeah, that one's going to be appraised at a higher level too. Wow. Well, folks, and now this the show is called Issues and Answers, so we found the issue. Now, what can we do about it? I definitely wanted to find that out before before I, I sent you out here mad at the world. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go to fairhousingjustice.org. 
they are and, and there it's a website and a, an organization that specializes in getting justice for people who feel like they have discriminated they have faced racism either in buying homes or selling homes also you can go to na nationalfairhousing.org that's national fairhousing.org all one word or you can file a federal complaint you can file fill out and file an administrative complaint with hud 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 fair housing equal opportunity off office which is by law supposed to investigate within 100 days of a filing you can call the nearest housing discrimination hotline at 8-1-800 uh at 1-800-669-9777 or print out a form and mail it to the nearest regional office or you could just go online go to hud hud online their fair housing equal opportunity office and file a complaint online the complaint form is available in english spanish and seven other languages retaliation now this is important folks because a lot of people are afraid of this retaliation for filing a complaint is illegal they are not supposed to be able to come back at you and, and come after you because you filed a complaint they also enforce anti-discrimination laws with respect to no mortgage lending and appraisals and with that we have to get out of here uh it's it's 750 i can't believe the show is over oh my god this this, yeah. this show went by quick Okay, folks, you can chop it up with me on Twitter at The Chemist Lives. The Chemist is spelled with a K as I'm a product of the Gary Community School System. We can talk about politics, music, sports. You can tell me how terrible I am at this. Where can they find you, Ralph? Well, tomorrow I'm going to be I'm gonna be at home trying to be <laughs> cowboy. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to be relaxing because next week I go back to school. Oh, okay. uh, but uh, Sunday I will be at St. John's Lutheran Church on 10th and 10th. At 9 a.m., I'll be at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church at uh, on uh, uh, 719 West 25th. I'll be there at 11 a.m. You can catch me either place. And you know what? I'll have I'll make time to chat with you. Yes. So for station owner Marion Williams, station manager Natalie Ammons, and Reverend Delwin Campbell, I am Scott Cannon. This is Issues and Answers on WLTH 1370 a.m. God bless the working class. God bless labor and rev. God bless you. Yes, and we are out. Thank <laughs> you.